happy workout Wednesday to everybody who is out there and is currently signed on for our workout tonight. Uh, I'm Brittany. I'm going to be leading today's workout Wednesday. I'm super excited. Balance and flexibility are so important um, from an everyday life and a sport performance perspective. So um, having that balance, or as Coach Wayne talked about last week, that center of gravity really helps us transfer power through our body. So we want to make sure we have a strong core, strong legs, strong back. Our arms will even play into that over time. Um, so we're going to get going for our workout today. So what we're going to start with is our warm-up today and there's a couple different parts to our warm-up so very similar to what uh, Coach Marie did last week so some of these will seem familiar some will be a little bit different. Uh, so first thing we're going to start with is some activation drills. Awesome. Hi Carla. So we're going to be working on activating our core, glutes, which are our bum muscles, which are really, really important for stability, um, our legs and our arms. So we're going to go through each of those areas once. Okay. Awesome. I got tons of thumbs up. All right. That means people are ready to go. All right. So to start with activating our core, we're going to do some cat cows. Okay. So I'm going to give you a version for doing it on the floor and then I'll give you a version if you need to stand to do it. Okay. So two different versions. And you're going to do this five times. So you need, you're going to need to count your own repetitions, okay? Woo, that sun is bright. I might need to close those blinds. All right, so four cat cow. If you're going to do it from the floor, you're going to start with your knees underneath your hips and your wrists directly underneath your shoulders. You're going to take a really big, deep breath in. You're going to round your back like a cat. Think about pushing those palms all the way through the floor. And then you're going to reverse. So you're thinking about your tummy getting really, really heavy. And then you're going to look forward. So again, you're going to round your back. Push those palms through the floor. Big, big arch like a cat. And then you're going to reverse and go the other way. Now, a standing version of this same exercise can be done. And so all you need to do is have your chair hands on the back of it you're going to walk your you're going to walk back just a little bit so your arms are stretched out we're going to think about still rounding our back so you're going to push your hands through the chair and then you're going to reverse let that tummy and belly button sink to the floor and head looks up so again rounding just like a cat big push through and reversing awesome all right so again we want to make sure we're each doing five of those. So again, counting your own repetitions. I'm going to do two more here to get my five in. Good, big round and reverse. And then the other way, again, rounding that back, pushing those palms through. Good, and reversing, head looks up. All right, so from here, we're going to move on to our glutes, which is our bum, which are our bum cheeks. And again, very important for stability. So we want to be able to activate these guys and get them warmed up. Okay. Oh, we got a couple of hellos. We've got awesome. Hi, Nick. Hi, Lori. Perfect. All right. So to activate our glutes, we're going to start with a glute bridge. So for a glute bridge, we're going to start on our back. We want our heels in line with our sit bones so that means there our legs are not touching they're about hip width apart from here what you want to do is think about squeezing your bum cheeks and then you're going to lift those hips off the floor nice and slow pushing them up as high as you can and then slowly lower down now we want to make sure when we do this glute bridge that we keep those knees separated so again they shouldn't be touching each other and then very slowly lower down. Again, I want everybody doing five of these. So again, counting five on your own. This is my third one. And slowly lower down. Some things to check while you're doing this is your shoulders. Our shoulders have a tendency to want to come up towards our ears. So you want to make sure they're pulled down and away. Awesome. I'm moving on to my number or on to my fifth one here. Good. Again, push it up as high as you can and then slowly lower down. All right. So we're working our way around the body. So we've activated through our glutes and we've activated through our core. We're going to move into our arms next. And then from here, we're going to be moving into our legs. Okay. So for our arms, we're going to be doing a modified uh, bird dog position. 
and I'll show you a version with a chair standing as well. So we're back to this four point position. So knees under shoulders, or sorry, knees under hips, wrists under shoulders. And then from here, you're gonna imagine you're a three legged tabletop. You're gonna lift one arm and bring it back down. You're gonna reset your position and bring the other arm up and back down. Again, keeping that back nice and flat. We are aiming for five times each side. Again, nice, slow, and controlled, okay? If you are doing these standing, again, you can use a chair for this. So again, we're gonna have our hands on the edge of a chair. We're gonna walk our feet back so we're into a similar position. You're gonna lift one arm up and then back onto the chair. Other arm up and back onto the chair. Again, we want these nice and controlled so we make sure we're activating the right muscles. So again, five times each side. I'm gonna do one more so I get my five in here. So again, lifting and down, and then lifting and down. Excellent. All right, so we're gonna move on to our last activation exercise. So we're gonna be working kind of the inner parts of our thighs today, or they're called our adductors. Um, these guys don't always get worked out very often, so it's, it's good that we remember to do them. And this is where your pillow will come into play, okay? So if you don't have a pillow, a small blanket, towel will work. And what you're gonna wanna do is fold this guy in half, and you're gonna be back on your back, so again, Similar to our glute bridge position, but this time we're gonna put the pillow between our legs. So what we wanna do is we wanna imagine we're trying to squeeze that pillow together with our legs, and you're gonna feel the inside muscles of your legs fire up. So when you go to squeeze, you're gonna squeeze for five seconds. So here we go, squeezing for five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Now we're gonna go again. So remember, you wanna squeeze as hard as you can for five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Now, a version if you are sitting in your chair is going to look like this. So sitting in your chair, and you're gonna fold that towel up, you're gonna put it between your legs. And again, you wanna squeeze those legs together for five, four, three, two, one, and relax. And again, one more time, big squeeze, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Awesome. So I'll give everyone just a few more moments here to finish up activating our adductors. So those inside leg muscles here, we'll see how everyone's going. Awesome, all right, looking good on the chat. Perfect, all right. So from here, we're gonna move into some dynamic mobility. So dynamic mobility is really important because it really works the range of motion within our joints. Uh, and we wanna be able to, you know, reach our arm up as high as we can, or it gives us the ability to throw better. Or for swimmers, because I coach swimming, we're really able to lengthen that arm out. All right, so we're gonna move into our dynamic mobility here. So first thing we're gonna start with is our legs. So we're gonna do a single, leg raise and we're gonna do these on the ground so you're gonna lie flat on the ground and then what i'm gonna get you to do you want to have your tummy slightly pulled in so we want to make sure those muscles are a little activated you're gonna lift your leg up as high as you can and then slowly lower back down again lift up bringing it as high as you can have your toe pointed towards you and back down we're doing six aside so i've done two Good, three. So we're working on range of motion in our hip. This is four. We're doing a little bit of hip flexion here. Five. And last one, six. All right, we're gonna wait a moment, shake those legs out a little bit. We're gonna move to the other side. So here we go, lifting leg up. Good, and down. Now, if you are sitting in a chair, what you can do is lift one leg straight as high as you can while you're sitting in a chair. 
and back down. Again, it'll look a little different, but it still will be working on that hip range of motion. All right, we've got three more. Two more. And here is our last one. Awesome. All right, we're gonna move up into the body. We're gonna move up into kind of our, our back and mid back, little bit of shoulder area. So I call this one open book. And so I'll show you a version on the ground and then I'll also show you a standing version. But if you're on the ground, I believe Coach Marie did this one last week as well. We want your feet and legs together. So stacked on top of each other and hands together like a book. From here, what you are going to do is open that top a hand as far as you can, trying to get towards the ground, and then coming back and clapping that hand back on top. Now, the key is to keep these legs together, so I shouldn't see that top leg move off the bottom leg. Now, if you can't touch the ground, that's okay. It just gives us an idea of where we can work on and where we can improve, okay? You can take your head and look towards that side. We got three more. Two more. And then we're going to switch sides here. Good. And last one. All right. So we're going to switch directions. Now, for those of you who are sitting, I'm going to give you a different way to do this. It's going to look slightly different. For everyone else who's on the ground, I want you to switch and start your other side. So, one way to do this is called, uh, or we're going to call it a thoracic rotation. So, you're going to start with your arms across your chest, and then what you're going to do, you want to keep both bum cheeks on the chair. You're going to rotate as far as you can one way, come back to center, rotate as far as you can the other way, back to center. And you're going to do that six times a side. So for those of you, again, who getting onto the ground isn't an option tonight, which is totally okay, you're going to do a seated rotation for me, okay? Now, for those of you who are doing the open book version, should have just a few left here on this other side. So again, feet together, opening up. Now, you may find one side is a little easier than the other. I know for me, that is definitely the case. This is definitely my easier side. A little bit more mobility here. Awesome. All right. So from here, we're moving into our last dynamic mobility. And we're going to do some further hip openers. Because again, those hips tend to get tight. So we want to spend a lot of time working on making sure they're nice and loose. Just check the chat here. Awesome. Hi, Andreas. All right, looking good, everybody. Okay, all right. So from here, I'm gonna get everybody standing. And if you have a chair available, perfect. You can use it for a little bit of balance, or if you really want to um, challenge your balance, you don't need to use the chair. So for our hip openers, you're gonna be standing on one leg. You're gonna lift one leg up. Oh, there goes my balance. You're gonna turn that hip to the outside, bring it back and down. Now the key is to keep this stabilizing hip still. So I don't wanna see that part of the hip move. If you need to just have one chair or one finger on the chair for balance, that's perfectly fine. You're still working on that area. You could try two fingers and then one finger. All right, we're gonna switch sides. Awesome. Good job, everybody. So again, we're working for about six times a side here. Good. Oh, I moved that hip a little bit. I need to keep that still a little bit more. Good. And relax. All right. We are almost done here. So moving into our last part of our warm-up, we're going to start working on getting our heart rate up a little bit. So it's always really good uh, to get that heart rate going because it brings oxygen to our muscles, especially on the extremities. So things like our arms and our legs, which is what we're going to be using. All right, so we are going to start with mountain climbers. Now we're going to do 30 seconds of these, and I'm going to give you two different variations. So don't start these yet. I'll tell you when we're going to go. So version one, you are going to go into what we call high plank position, and you're going to bring your knees in one at a time. Again, don't do these. I'm just going to show you options. So that's version one. 
If you'd like to use your chair, we have your chair set up. Again, arms out straight, and you're gonna pull a knee in one at a time. So two different versions. You do what's gonna best for you, okay? And we're gonna do 30 seconds of these. All right, so let's get everybody into their chosen mountain climb position. I'm gonna get my watch timer going here. All right, here we go in three, two, one. Good, pulling those knees in. Now, one thing we wanna to remember to do is breathe. It's super tempting to hold our breath while we do this, but that means our muscles are not getting the oxygen we need. You guys are doing great. We're halfway through, we got 15 seconds left. Good. You may start to feel this in your abdominal muscles. That is perfectly normal. Good. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Awesome, well done. We've done our mountain climbers. Alrighty, so from here, we're gonna be moving into our leg swings, all right? So I believe this is a fit, a fit five exercise. So this is one that we've done before and you probably have seen. So for our leg swings, again, if you need a little help with balance, Try just one finger on the chair to still challenge yourself a little bit, but let's see if we can go without our chair. So we're gonna do 10 times one leg, 10 times the other leg. Now to help, whoa, there goes my balance. Now to help with your balance, a couple things to think about is look forward. If we're looking down at the ground, that means our body will most likely tip that way. So looking forward is one thing. Second, shoulders back and down. So a lot of us tend to round our shoulders forward. I want you to think shoulders woo, back and down. Excellent. And another thing to think about is how your foot is positioned. We want to think about keeping that foot evenly weighted. So we don't want too much weight into the heel. But we also don't want to be up onto our toes either. All right. We're going to try side to side. This one tends to be a little bit more challenging. So again, leg out and back in. Now, if you feel like you need a little bit of assistance, try just one finger on a chair. Good. Looking great, guys. All right. Switch to the other side here. Again, shoulders back and down. Think about looking forward, pushing that whole foot through the ground. Good. Think about that breathing. Wanting a nice big inhale and a nice big exhale. Awesome. And relax. All right. So we finished warm up. So everyone grab a quick sip of water here, okay? Perfect. Awesome. Good. I'm glad you're feeling good, Lori. That's perfect. Hi, Wyatt. All right. So from here, we're going to move into our balance drills. We have three of them at three different levels, okay? Now, it's okay if you have to put a foot down or you don't quite make it the whole time. The purpose is, is to try the best we can and to keep trying within that time limit, okay? So the first one that we are going to do is a tandem stance. So when I say tandem stance, I mean one foot behind, one foot in front, and we're going heel to toe. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the side. So my left foot is behind, my right foot in front is heel to toe, and we're gonna bend our knees, and we're gonna look forward. If you need to, you can bring your hands out to the side. So this helps counterbalance a little bit. So we're gonna hold this for 10 seconds, and then we're gonna swap our legs. So I'd like everyone to get into a tandem stance. Perfect, take a really big deep breath in, and exhale, all right. We're gonna switch legs. So this time, if you had your right foot behind, I want your left foot behind. And if you had your left foot behind, I want your right foot behind. Again, bend those knees, arms out to the side if you need a little extra um, uh, support there. Or if you wanna challenge yourself, you can bring your hands to your hips. Again, we wanna think about looking forward, not down at our feet. Another thing you can think about is squeezing your bum cheeks, because again, those muscles are really good stabilizers for your hips. Excellent, and relax. Okay, let's do this again. This time we're gonna switch legs again. Let's go into that tandem stance. Awesome. Now, if you wanna challenge yourself even more, what you can do is keep your hands on your hips, but you turn your head to the side, come back to center, 
Turn your head to the side, come back to center. By turning your head, it increases the difficulty a little bit. Good. And come up, let's switch legs again. So again, you can also think about bending your knees more. This will give you a little bit more work on the legs as well. Awesome. So again, looking forward, shoulders down and back. Think about squeezing those glute muscles or those bum cheek muscles. Good. Take a nice big deep breath in. And exhale. And another big deep breath in. Excellent. One more time. Here we go. End up doing three times a side. Okay. So I want you, if you had your hands out for this last one, I want you to challenge yourself by putting your hands on your hips. If your hands were on your hips, I want you to challenge yourself by looking side to side. And if you're already looking side to side, what I want you to add in is moving your arms back and forth. So again, another way to increase that challenge or that instability. All right, let's switch legs. Here we go. Again, bend those knees, look forward. Choose your challenge compared to where you were last time. I'm gonna go back to swinging my arms. Awesome. Our, oh, I just lost my balance there. There we go. Okay, awesome. So that is our level one balance exercise. That's a really good time or you can practice that position when you're brushing your teeth because it'll make you really focus on your core. So our level two balance exercise is a progression of what we just did. And we're gonna be doing a heel to toe walking, okay? So what it's going to look like when I say heel to toe is, I'm starting kind of at the end of my mat here. And as I walk, I'm bringing one foot in front of the other, but we're making sure heel to toe touch. So there are short steps, like we're walking on a tight rope. Awesome. And then you're gonna turn around when you've gone as far as you can, and then you're gonna go the other way. So again, I want you to imagine you're walking on a tight rope, looking forward if you need to, Arms can be out to the side, helps balance a little bit more. Good, all right. We're gonna keep going here, we're gonna keep practicing this. So if you were doing this with your hands out to the side, let's challenge you by bringing your hands to your hips. And if you had your hands to your hips before, I want you to turn your head as you walk, because this will definitely, oh, there goes my balance, increase the instability piece. All right, last time, here we go. So again, heel to toe, choose your challenge. Take it nice and slow, make sure you've got full control. Good, and relax. So that was a level two balance exercise. So it's a fun time to practice that is whenever you're walking down a hall, because you've got the wall right there for support, so if you need. So next time you're walking down a hallway in your house, try to walk heel to toe. Um, so our last exercise is a level three balance exercise, and I call this one the clock exercise. So this is how it's gonna look. Now again, you have the option. If you need, think about just one finger on the chair. If not, for a clock exercise, you can move your hands to your hips. You're gonna stand on one leg, looking forward, and then you're gonna imagine your foot that's in the air is like the hand of a clock. It's gonna come forward as if it's going to 12 o'clock. It's gonna push up to the side as if it's going to three o'clock, and then it's gonna push back as if it's going to six o'clock. And we wanna do this without letting that leg touch the ground as we come back to center. Last time on this side here. Good. So if you need to, you can have just one finger on your chair and back. All right. Shake those legs out. Let's try the other side. So again, slight bend in that knee that's going to stabilize you. Forward. Side. And back. Again, we want to make sure that upper body stays nice and tall on top of our rib cage. Good. One more time here, forward, side, and back. Good. 
Awesome. Good job, everybody. So those are the balance drills we just went through. Uh, grab a sip of water. Now, again, you can practice balance drills like that whenever you find you're standing in line. Again, brushing your teeth, walking down a hallway. Maybe you are uh, hanging out at your desk and you're standing for a little bit. Try to put yourself into those slightly unstable positions because that will help. All right. So from here, we are moving into our strength portion. So again, just because we're working on flexibility and balance doesn't mean we can't still work on making those muscles really, really strong. Awesome. Hi. Oh, thank you, Andreas. I appreciate that very much. Don't worry. I promise to give the password or the, the, the passcode during the video, okay? I'm going to do it closer to the end, though, okay? All right, so first thing we're going to start with for an exercise or strength exercise is we're going to do our core and then we'll end up moving to our legs and then we'll end up moving to our back because those are three areas that are very important when it comes to our balance. So first one we're going to be doing is what I call a V-sit and I'll give you options both seated and in chair, okay? So if you're on the floor for a V-sit, what we want to do is start by sitting on our bum and bring those legs in as close as we can. So it's like you're trying to bring your heels into your sit bones. We also want to make sure we have a nice tall back. So we don't want to be rounded. We want to think nice and tall, shoulders back and down. And what you can do is bring your arms up to the side and see if you can lift your feet off the ground. So this is working your core, but also working some stability and balance. Now, if you're finding that's a little bit too hard, you can bring just your toes back down to the ground and that's going to help. All right, so for those of you on the ground, I want you to give that a practice, okay? See how long you can hold that for. All right, for those of you who are needing or wanting to sit in a chair, you're gonna do something very similar. And I'm actually gonna show this from the side because it'll give you a better idea. You're gonna sit in your chair, but I don't want you to sit all the way back like I'm currently am. I want you to sit closer to the edge of your chair so there's space between. And so again, very similar, you are gonna bring your legs up. Think nice and tall core, okay? So you may not lean back if you don't, if we don't have quite enough strength yet, that's okay. I just want you to practice lifting your legs off the ground and keeping that nice tall posture because that is still gonna work that core, okay? All right, I'm gonna give everyone a quick chance to practice that. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna see if we can hold that for about 30 seconds, okay? All right, so we're gonna move into our first set here. So everyone shake everything out. We're gonna go into our first full 30 seconds of holding our V sets, okay? So I'm gonna get my watch started here. All right, here we go in three, two, one. 30 seconds with our V sits. Good. Think nice and tall, shoulders down and back, proud chest. You feel this in your core? Perfect, that's where we wanna think about feeling it. We're halfway done guys, 30 more seconds. You're doing great here. Keep this going. Good. Five, four, three, two, one, and down. Awesome. We're going to do that two more times. We're going to give you a little bit of rest here and then two more times. All right. So let's get everybody ready again here. So again, shoulders down and back. Think about slight pulling with that belly. You can lift the arms out up to the side or you can put them on your hips and lifting up. Again, if you're finding it a little bit of a challenge, you can bring those big toes to the ground. Good. We're about 10 seconds in. Make sure we're breathing big inhales and big exhales. You guys are doing great. 10 more seconds here. Good job, guys. Excellent. And relax those legs down. Give it a shake out. If you're on a chair, give those legs a little bit of shake out as well. We have one more set of our V-sits, okay? All right. So again, sitting nice and tall on those sit bones. Bring those heels in. Shoulders down and back, lift those legs and arms out to the side. Good. Awesome. Keep this going, everybody. Big inhale. 
Big exhale, feel those core muscles working. You guys are doing great. We have 15 seconds left. That means we are halfway done here. Awesome. All right, we're coming up to our last five, four, three, two, one, and down. Awesome. Shake those legs out. If you need to, grab a quick sip of water here. Awesome. Hi, Rose. Hi, Lee. All right. So we're going to show you our next exercise. Now, this is going to be for our lower back, but also a little bit for our core is dead bug. So again, I will show you a, or a, a version on our back here, and then there's a version we can do with a chair as well. So if you are on the floor, you're going to want to make sure your head all the way to your bum is glued to the floor. You will then bring your legs up. So you want to think about your legs are bent at your knees and you got your toes pulled in towards you. You can then bring your arms straight up. Now a little bit of coordination here. Opposite arm, opposite leg are going to push out and then you're going to bring them back to center. Again, opposites push out, come back to center. Now our goal is to keep our lower back against the ground. So we don't want to see any lifting there. All right, so this is going to be your version if you want to do it on the floor. Now, if you are in a chair, your version, again, similar. We're going to be sitting on our chair. Ooh, that sun is bright. All right, legs up, arms out. Now, what we're going to want to think about doing is straightening one leg straight out in front. Bring the arms up. Again, I'll show you from the side here because we want to make sure we're activating that lower back or strengthening that lower back. We do not want to be sitting right against the chair. We want a little bit of space. So it forces, forces our core and back to work, okay? So those are our two different versions. So again, we're going to do 30 seconds and repeat this three times, okay? So we're gonna get everybody ready here. So choose your version on the ground or on the chair. Again, 30 seconds. Here we go in two, one. So again, I want you to think about exhale as you bring opposite arm and leg back in. Now, if you're on the ground, you can also work on just using your legs. Your arms can stay straight up. So again, there's different ways for us to scale this exercise. Good, we've got 10 seconds left. Good job, everybody. And relaxing down. Good, all right. We got 15 seconds rest and we're gonna do this two more times. Awesome, five more seconds rest. Here we go in three, two, one, getting into our ready position, and here we go. So again, if you notice your lower back is lifting off the ground, I want you to think about pushing your belly button towards the ground, because that's gonna help keep that core engaged and our back from lifting. Good. We have five, four, three, two, one, relax and come on down. Whew. All right, we have, again, 15 seconds rest, then we're gonna do this one more time. Coming up into our last five seconds of rest. All right, bring those legs back up, arms back up, here we go. Good. Excellent, good job, everybody. You're probably feeling this in your core and into your back. Awesome, we're gonna keep this going. We have five seconds. Good, four, three, two, one, and relax. All right, well done, everybody. All right, let's grab a quick sip of water here, and then we're gonna move into our last strength exercise before we finish with a little bit of stretching and yoga. Okay. Awesome, I see some great health habits on here. 
Awesome. We got Jordan eating or making sure she's drinking water, eating fruits and vegetables. Awesome lyric. I'm glad that you like you find that the floor works better for you. Perfect. Okay, so last one uh, is going to be uh, a squat exercise that Coach Maria actually did last week as well. And I liked it so much that I wanted to add it in as well. So we're going to be doing a squat and then a tap out. A squat and then a tap out. Now, if we want to take it up one level, if you feel ready for that, you can squat. And then as you come up, instead of letting that leg tap the floor, you're going to let it raise right up off the floor. So you come into a single leg balance, okay? So you have two different options, all right? So we're going to do this for 30 seconds. Here we go in three, two, one. So down and tap out. Good. Squeeze those bum cheeks and tap out. Again, if you want to challenge, instead of tapping that foot to the floor, you're gonna push that leg to the side. Good. Awesome. We have 10 seconds here and then you'll get a break. Make sure you squeeze your bum cheeks or your bum muscles as you come up here. Good and relax. We're gonna get 10 seconds rest with this one. So a little shorter compared to last time. So five more seconds rest here. All right, here we go. Again, either tap or push that leg out to a single leg stance, so wherever you feel like you're at. Don't forget to breathe. Excellent, good job, everybody. 10 more seconds before we get rest. And relax. Whew, whew, talking and exercising get your heart rate going okay all right we have one more set left here and then we've got our challenge exercises all right here we go so again you can either tap out to the side or lift that leg completely off the ground awesome good job everybody 15 seconds Good. Five, four, three, two, one. I relax. Beautiful. All right. Whew. Let's grab some water here. Oh, that's awesome, Kayla. This is your fifth exercise today. Perfect. Okay. Whew. All right, so we are going to be moving into our challenge exercises next. So the first one we're going to be doing is our stork stand. So you would have done this last week with Coach Marie, and so there's a couple different versions depending on where you're at. And our goal is to see how long you can hold this for within our 30 seconds. Now, if you need to put your leg down or reposition, totally fine. We just want you to keep going, okay? All right, so... Again, stork stand, version one. You're gonna bring your heel all the way up to the inside of your legs. And then you wanna bring your hands all the way up, okay? So that's version one. The other version that you can take is bringing that leg down to your calf, so a little lower. So there's two different options. Now we're gonna try 30 seconds one leg, 30 seconds the other leg, okay? So I'm going to get my timer going, and again, if you need to step out of the uh, position and reposition yourself, totally fine. We just want you to keep going. All right, we're going to get everyone in position. Oh, here we go in three. Oh, my balance is challenged. Two, one. Here we go. Okay, so coming into our historic stand, we're going to see how long we can hold this for. So again, if you need to tap out to rebalance yourself, Totally fine. Awesome, good job everybody. We have 15 seconds left. Perfect, so again, squeeze those bum cheeks. Think really tall thoughts. Good, and relaxing down, all right? Let's shake those legs out. Now we're gonna do the other leg. So again, you'll usually find one side is easier than the other. Totally normal. So what are we gonna get you to do? Again, 
Bring that opposite leg up. Again, you have the option of bringing it to your inner thigh or down towards your calf. I'm just gonna check where I see where I'm at with our timer. All right, let's bring those arms up above our head. Here we go for 30 seconds. Good, nice and tall. Think shoulders down and back. For some of my swimmers, you can think of this as streamlined position almost. You wanna have those ears very close to your head. Good, everyone's whoa, doing great as I check the time. We have 10, whoa, 10 seconds left here. Good. Awesome and relax and down. All right, so that's our first challenge exercise, okay? So think about it, how it was compared to last week. Did you find that really easy? So way up here, was it medium or was it quite hard, okay? So think about where you are and how it was compared to last week. So from here, we're gonna move into our second, second challenge exercise and this is our seated hamstring stretch. So we're gonna hold it first for 10, then for 20, and then for 30 seconds, okay? So for our seated hamstring stretch, you're gonna want your feet about hip or just wider than hip width apart, and then toes pulled back towards you, okay? Hands can be together or reaching out towards your toes. You're gonna wanna think about keeping your back nice and straight as you hinge forward. Now we're gonna hold this position here, or this is a position, hi Charlie, <laughs> that we're gonna get into in a moment here, okay? So that's position. We're first gonna hold it for 10 seconds, get a rest, and then 20 seconds, get a rest, 30 seconds, get a rest, okay? So everyone get into position, okay? Reaching forward. Now again, if you can't touch your toes, that's totally fine. I can't quite get mine either. So taking a nice big inhale. Good, last five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Okay, shake those legs out. We're gonna hold it for 20 seconds this time. So again, roll those shoulders down and back, hinge forward, here we go. Good, everyone's doing great. Another 10 seconds here. Keep that breathing going. And relax and back up. That's our 20 seconds. Give yourself a quick stretch. Shake those legs out. We're going to be going back down for a full 30 seconds this time. I want you to remember to keep breathing, no breath holding. All right, here we go in five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. And leaning forward. See if you can stretch just a little bit farther this time. Big inhale. As you exhale, think about relaxing those muscles that feel really tense right now. Breathing is really important when it comes to increasing our flexibility or our range of motion. Good, we're almost done here. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on up. Awesome. Okay, so we are done our challenge exercises for today. So I'd like everyone to grab a sip of water. Oh, hi, Carla. Yes, I know you can see Charlie. Awesome. We have some people who find the challenge exercises were either a medium or easy or hard, depending where people are at. Um, oh, Heather, my cat's name is Charlie. That's her name. All right, so we're going to move into our last portion of our workout today. We're going to do um, a bit of a yoga static stretching um, workout for the last 15 minutes here. Uh, so the big things I want you to remember with this is everybody's body is different. So just because my position may look a little different from yours, it just may mean that we're at different flexibility or mobility levels depending on the type of exercise. So again, flexibility is how long we can stretch a muscle. Range of motion is how much movement we have around, say, like our shoulder joint. So I have a couple different exercises in there. So again, uh, the other thing to remember too, you should not stretch to the point of pain. Stretching should never be painful. So if you're finding it's a little bit too much, just back off slightly. You're going to end up getting better results in the end if you take it nice and slow. Uh, and then finally, again, we want to make sure you're breathing. So again, nice big inhale through the nose, filling up that belly, and then slowly exhaling that air out. So let's do two more together like that, just to get us into that mindset of we're gonna be doing some relaxing stretching here, taking again a nice big deep breath in. 
and we're gonna exhale good nice and slow one more time think about counting to four as you inhale in Two, three four and exhale one two three and four all right so let's get going so the first one i've got going for us is child's pose and this is one of my all-time favorite stretches because it really stretches out your back shoulders it gets into a bunch of different places so for child's pose and i'll show you a version with a chair as well in a moment here you can do wide-legged child pose so you're going to bring your toes together and then your knees are going to be nice and wide apart and this is where charlie's probably going to come in from here, you're gonna walk your hands forward as far as you can while still keeping your heels towards your bum and let your head rest onto the ground. We're gonna be holding this for at least 30 seconds, so I want you to get nice and comfortable. And so again, taking those big deep breaths in. And as you exhale, think about your body getting heavy into the ground. Now another option, if somebody would like to use a chair, is you're gonna have your hands on the back, you're gonna walk your feet out until you can get a nice long line with your body and then just let everything hang in between your arms. So again, taking a nice big breath in. And exhale. We're gonna keep holding here. So again, you have three more big inhales. And three more big exhales before we change positions. Good. This is our last exhale. Now from here, we're going to keep in a very similar position. But what I'm going to get you to do for those who are using the chairs, you're going to walk your hands to one side of the chair. And what you're going to find is this stretches along the opposite side of the body. So I've got my hands on the left side of the chair. So this is stretching out the right side of my body. So this is stretching out my lat muscles, which are really big back muscles. For those of you who are on the ground, you're going to do something very similar. Again, you had your hands out to the side or out to the front before. You're going to walk them over until you feel a stretch up on that opposite side. And again, you're gonna take three big inhales and exhales before we move to the other side. One more before we switch. All right, let's walk our hands to the other side. Again, still try to keep your bum towards your heels. Don't let that space open up too, too much. And for those of you using the chair, you're going to walk your hands to the other side of the chair. And take a nice, big, deep breath in. And exhale. And one more. Slowly walk your hands back to center and then very slowly come on up. Awesome. All right. So from here, we're going to move into our next stretch, which is going to be for our hip flexors. Now our hip flexors, we've got our quad muscles here, but our hip flexors sit a little higher and they essentially connect our legs to our pelvis or to our core. And they can tend to get very, very tight with lots of sitting. So Two versions, if you're on the ground, version one, we're gonna get you into a, um, I guess a, lun a lunging or kneeling position here. And what I want you to think is really tall thoughts. So you wanna think nice and tall. Now, instead of leaning forward, which is something that we often will do for a hip flexor stretch, we're gonna try something different today. So you're gonna get into that nice tall position. Now, what you're gonna do is on your back leg, you're gonna think about squeezing that bum cheek. And what happens when you squeeze that bum cheek, it very subtly pops your hip forward a little bit and you get more of a stretch in this upper part of your hip instead of down into your quad. So we wanna get more of this upper part. And so what you're gonna do is slowly squeeze that bum cheek and relax. 
10 times. All right. Now, for those of you who want to stand and do this, we can do a very similar version. You have the back of your chair for balance. Again, we're going to take a lunge position, but this time just our knee is not on the ground. So again, instead of leaning forward, what I want you to think about doing is actually squeezing that bum cheek. Again, it's going to pop the hip forward. You'll feel a subtle stretch and relax. So once you've done this 10 times on one side, I'm going to get you to switch and you will perform 10 times on the other side. Awesome. All right, we'll go switch and we're going to do the other leg here. Now, if you find you're not quite getting, you're still not quite feeling that stretch there, even with a bum cheek squeeze, what you can do is take that hand up overhead and that should provide a little extra stretch there. And if we're doing that on the ground, again, into our kneeling position, bring arm up and over, still keeping that bum squeeze going. Awesome, you guys are doing great. So again, when you're done 10 times both sides, you can relax, grab a sip of water if you need to. Okay, so from here, we're gonna move into our groin stretch. So our groin stretch is for our adductors, which we worked when we did our pillow squeeze earlier. All right, so a couple different versions for our groin stretch. So one that people may be familiar with is butterfly. So you're gonna bring those heels together. Now, depending on how close you bring those heels in, increases the intensity of the stretch. So if you bring those heels in super close and that just does not feel like a good position, you can bring those legs out, okay? Just until you feel a slight stretch. Again, we wanna sit nice and tall, so a really good posture. And if you want, you can apply just a gentle pressure with your arms down. Try not to flap your legs like a butterfly. All right, we're going to be a still butterfly today. Again, taking a nice big deep breath in. And exhale. And again, nice big deep breath in. And nice slow exhale. Good, we're gonna keep holding. If you feel that stretch start to loosen up, you can then bring those legs in a little bit closer. So again, nice tall posture, nice deep breath in. Good, and exhale. So if some people like, they like to close their eyes when they stretch because it helps their body relax a little bit. So if you find that is something that helps, by all means, definitely go ahead and do that. I know it finds, I find it really helps me. Good, last one here. And exhale. All right. So we're gonna move up our body a little bit. So we just did a bunch of leg stretches. So we're gonna move into our hips and stretch out those glutes or bum cheek muscles that we had been doing. So a couple different versions here. So if we're on the ground, some people call this one thread the needle. You're gonna bring one leg on top of the other and then you're gonna take your hands and thread them through and grab the back of your thigh there. And so you're gonna feel this in the leg that is crossed over. So for me, it's gonna be my left leg. And so again, in this position, I want you to take four deep inhales and exhales before you move to the other side. For those who are seated, an alternative version that we can do is in your chair. We're gonna cross, again, one leg over and sit nice and tall. If you don't feel much of a stretch there, you can lean forward a little bit. And again, you'll feel that kind of um, kick in or stretch that glute muscle a little bit. So again, four inhales and four exhales before you are allowed to move to the other side. Uh, letting those shoulders relax each time you exhale. All right, let's switch legs here. If you've or if you've done your four and switch legs already, perfect. Again, nice and tall. 
and leaning forward. Then big inhale through the nose. And then exhale through the mouth. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So from here, again, continuing to move up the body. So we've done our hips. We're going to move into our back next. And this is probably my all time favorite stretch. So we're going to get you back down onto the ground here. Now, you're going to start with your arms out to the side. What you're going to do is then let those legs fall one way while your head looks the other way. And what this does is gives you a nice stretch through your lower back. It's almost like wringing out a washcloth is what it feels like. Now, if you don't feel much of a stretch, what you can do is bring your legs back to center, pick both legs up, and then very slowly let them fall to the other side. And that should increase it a little bit. Again, big inhale. And then on the exhale, think about letting your shoulders relax so you can get that back to relax a little bit more. All right, slowly bring those legs back to center. And we're gonna allow them to fall to the other side. So again, for me, this side feels a little tighter than the other side. Again, everybody's body's different, so you may notice there's a difference, you may not. And big exhale. See if we can get that back to relax a little bit more. Excellent, and bring those legs back to center. All right, from here we're slowly gonna sit up because we're gonna continue to move up our body. So we ended up getting our back, upper back stretched out when we did our child's pose position. So what we wanna work with next is stretching out our chest muscles. So a nice one for that is just bringing your hands, clasping them behind your back and pulling your shoulders down and open. Now, as you breathe, I want you to breathe into the front of your rib cage, so this part right here. As you breathe into the front of the rib cage, you're gonna feel that chest expand. Same with that stretch. And then nice, slow exhale. Again, how much air can we fill into those rib, into that rib cage? And exhale. Again, we're gonna go two more times here. Nice, big inhale. And exhale. And last one. Good, all right. Few more stretches to go just to get through the rest of the body. So we're gonna move into our neck here, all right? So again, with lots of computer work or lots of sitting, we can build up a lot of tension in this area. So it's really good to make sure we stretch it out. So the first one I want you to do is just bring your ear towards your shoulder. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is you don't actually want to elevate that shoulder. You want to keep that shoulder down. Now, you may find it a little beneficial to apply just a very little bit of pressure here. And you're going to feel that stretch all along through here. So I know for me, that's one of my tight areas in the body. So I can really feel that stretch. So again, nice big inhale. And exhale. And nice big inhale. And exhale. Good. We're going to do one more inhale and then switch to the other side. And I see that it's just rolled into 8 o'clock here. So we'll start to finish off. Coming back to center. Letting those head or let that head fall to the opposite side. Again, you can provide a little bit of extra resistance 
if you would like. But if you're like me, I'm very tight there, so I do not need that extra help. Good, big inhale. And exhale. Again, three more times with those inhales and exhales. Good, slowly bringing that head back to center. Now our last stretch, we're gonna think about bringing our chin towards our chest. So we end up stretching our muscles all the way up the back of our neck. So again, nice big inhale. And exhale. And last one. Excellent. Well done, everybody. If you want, give yourself just a twist to the side or a couple of shoulder rolls, whatever feels good. You guys did fantastic with our flexibility and balance session tonight. Uh, thank you for everyone who came. Um, I hope everyone has a fantastic time at the dance tomorrow night. Um, I've heard tons about it from a lot of athletes. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy it because you guys have all worked so hard. I'll stay on for a few minutes, answer any questions uh, that come up in the chat. Other than that, you are very welcome to sign off. Awesome. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you, Sarah, for joining us. Thanks for joining Lisa. And thanks for joining Lori. Bye, Kayla. Awesome. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Jordan. Awesome. Oh, the password. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, it is purple horse. So the password today is purple horse. Thank you for reminding me, swimmers. <laughs> awesome. Well, I hope you enjoy your work outside with your mom there, Andreas. Awesome. Hi, Wyatt. Again, password is purple horse. If anyone wants to, they can throw that into the chat. Again, purple horse. Awesome. Thank you, Coach Marie. I had a fantastic time watching yours and, and doing yours last week as well. Uh, again, password, sorry guys, is purple horse. If someone would like to throw that up into the chat, I'm going to see maybe I can even put that into the chat. Uh, oh, I can. All right. So password for tonight is purple horse. All right. So I just threw it up. Yeah, you got it. I just threw it up in the chat. I apologize. I forgot. I have a tendency to do that. So thank you for reminding me. Bye, Ryan. Have a good night. Awesome. So I'll stay on for probably two to three more minutes here. Yeah, you got it. Purple horse. Thanks, James, for joining. Awesome. Thanks for joining, Je uh, Shelby. Yeah, you got it, Lee. Purple horse. Bye, Kevin. Yeah, you got it, Kayla. I've never heard of that book, Kelly, before. Eric Carroll. Huh, I'll check that out. Good night, Andrew. Bye, Laura. Good night, Ren. Thank you so much for joining. Bye, Kennedy. I hope you have a great evening. <laughs> James, anytime do that. That's cute. I like that. Uh, bye, Kayla. Yeah, I hope everyone has a fantastic time. Melissa, purple is your favorite color. Fantastic. All right, so last minute. So any last minute questions? Again, password is purple horse. Kim, do you have any suggestions for stretching? 
a very good question. Um, I'd say any of the stretches we actually did today um, would be fantastic. So we kind of worked from the bottom of the body all the way up. Um, the big thing if you're going to do static stretching, um, Kimberly, for you, so static stretching is when you hold it for a long period of time. Um, you, you do want to make sure you get at least that 30 seconds in um, and you want to make sure you're breathing. Now, those static stretches go really well at the end of a workout. The type of stretching we want to do at the beginning of a workout is more dynamic. So uh, things like the leg swings that we did or arm circles, because that helps kind of get the blood flow and things going. So static stretching, better at the end of the workout. Uh, dynamic, much better at the start of our workout. I hope that answers your question, Kimberly. All righty. So I'm going to sign off for tonight. Um, I hope everyone has a great rest of your evening and we'll see you guys again. Bye.